Hey everybody, my name is Anthony and I'm happy meeting you again on our next lighting game breakdown. For those of you who just came across my channel, welcome to lighting game videos where we go through some examples from movies and commercials, breaking down the lighting, framing and finding some interesting ideas that we all can take away from these nice examples to be better cinematographers, videographers and video creators ourselves. You can find previous episodes and breakdowns right here. We were analyzing shots from Peaky Blinders and No Country for an Old Man. Uh, check them out. And today I think is the time to take a look at a scene from Bridge of Spies, debated by Janusz Kaminski. If you like this content, please consider subscribing motivates me to do more breakdowns for you guys, and I'm really happy you like them. And now, let the lighting game begin. Let's start with a day interior scene, and uh, uh, here the CIA boss, uh, the director of uh, Central Intelligence, is having a conversation in his office with the main hero, the lawyer, played by Tom Hanks. This is a medium two shot and we are looking into the window, which is acting as a key light for the CIA director. We will see it later on. The movie was shot on film and we see this nice highlight roll off on the window shooting on digital cameras now and having similar scenes for the day. No matter whether you shoot on real location with the sun coming through the window or it's a studio build and you set in a powerful light source through diffusion, make sure you don't blow out the highlights. We don't want to see giant white blobs instead of windows, but rather smooth highlights with probably some details. The production design helps a lot here by providing additional layer of diffusion in the form of uh, this white curtain and uh, nice two dark curtains right and left to keep the light from the window under control. Don't let it spill into the walls. We don't have too much spill in there. Speaking of the walls, they're nice and dark wood soaking up all the light bounce in the room, helping with contrast and making the cinematographer's life easier. For Tom Hanks' key light, we are rigging a softbox from above, probably a softbox with an egg crate, uh, because Janusz Kaminski likes egg crates, given his key light right here. It's slightly warmer, then the window light, it's soft and diffused and motivated by this practical lamp on the background. So we pretend uh, that this practical lamp, which in reality is way, dimmed way down, not to draw attention to itself, is providing this light, this key light. Whereas in reality, it comes from much bigger and stronger source from above. In this shot, there is not too much contrast on their faces. And uh, I assume uh, there is a white bounce placed somewhere here. Maybe 8x8 eight eight frame or 6x6 six six bounce frame. Bouncing the light from the window and from this light source uh, back, giving some gentle, undirectional fill light to their faces just very slightly pushing the light back, avoiding feeling too much. Jumping to over the shoulder on CIA director, and now this soft light from the window, the window we saw in previous shot, serves as his key light. Notice that in this shot, we have a bit more contrast on this side than in previous shots. Let's get back and see the previous shot. There is not so dark in here and a bit darker now in this shot. We might drop off that fill bounce from the previous shot. We used to bounce the light back and if there is still 
too much level. As always, uh, we place a black floppy or a couple of black floppies on this side to soak up the light bounce and create some contrast in this spot. Second thing to take away from this shot is the reduced amount of level on Tom Hanks' back. Even though uh, his back is turned to the window, it's pretty dark. To keep it nice and dark, uh, as we want to draw attention to the CIA director, of course, not to the foreground, we place some nets. So we place nets here and reduce the level on his back. I also like this hint of warm practical from frame left. It's here to keep the look consistent from shot to shot. Then goes the reverse over the shoulder on the lawyer, which was filmed at the same time as this middle shot. So it goes this middle shot, then tighter, and then camera switches to the other side. Then we see a moving shot as both heroes and one more agent uh, walk into the table on the other side of the room. The location has windows only from one side. All these windows are located on, uh, on one wall, on the left wall. So whenever you do the location scout for your next day interior shot, have a mental note uh, how many windows the location has. Is it possible to block some of them that are not in shot to create contrast? Basically, less variables you have in your lighting equation, windows as light sources in this case, the easier to control them. You can always add complexity if you want, but it's always good to start with something you can control and build on it source by source. So here we have several HMIs coming through the row of windows, probably one HMI uh, at each window, one HMI light shining through each window. They are quite diffused and not clipping these highlights. The camera lens has something like one quarter promised filter, which helps to create this subtle glowing effect in highlights, if you can see it. Then we have nice dimmed down uh, warm practicals switched on everywhere, on the wall, here on the back, and this lamp, giving nice spots of light in short and uh, some color contrast. And of course, a bit of hazing, which you can see in the shadows, which is quite typical uh, for these kind of shots. Here is the same work uh, shot from the side and here you can see clearly see the effect of the lens filter. All these glowing highlights on the practical and slightly glowing highlights on windows and of course haze helping to create these nice shafts of light from the window. So this is a moving shot and we need to have some kind of white bounce, for example, white polyboard moving with the camera, whether it's a steady cam or a dolly, to provide some feel for their faces from this side. The heroes sit down as the conversation evolves, and I like the framing and composition here. We can see the distance between these two personalities and the third agent acting as an unbiased observer. We are shooting into the windows here, which is always kind of a small mental yellow flag, not to blow out the highlights. Uh, but by doing so, we have a nice upstage key light from these windows to these sitting guys. Depending on the location and how much bounce light you have from the walls and how much contrast you want, to see on people's faces. There might be a need to feel a bit for these two guys with bounce boards, so, but do it very gently. We don't want to lose contrast. We don't want to feel that feel light. 
so we just slightly raise the levels on the fill side. We also have this nice warm practical frame left giving one more layer uh, of depth for the shot. Here is over the shoulder on the lawyer and a very deep space. This row of windows on this wall frame right with shafts of light coming through the window accentuated by the haze in the room. This all creates a lot of depth to the shot. We have this nice light and dark and light and dark variation by the bright windows and dark walls also accentuated by the practicals. The key light here comes uh, from the window of course and we don't see a lot of level on the fill side and as always keeping the foreground nice and dark the reverse over the shoulder with a soft key light coming through windows here's our key quite soft and diffused and two nice warm practicals on the background which helps us create some depth because now we are shooting into the wall and uh, we would welcome anything that helps us creating this 3D dimensionality in a shot and keeping the foreground nice and dark by placing some neck fill right near the camera. Here's one more angle from this scene and I like how hazing helps lifting shadows a bit. The agent here should be front lit naturally, of course, because he's sitting, he's facing the window. But to help create some contrast, we place a neck fill from frame right close to his back, probably right near the edge of the frame. We talked a lot about how wonderfully Roger Dickens escapes the front light situations like this in favor of side lighting, avoiding this flat lighting, creating some contrast that we see here. In the previous episode, side light for an old man, and I recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it yet. Single shot on the CIA director and look how low the camera is positioned. It's much lower his eyeline. We show that this person holds a position so high. Uh, we are not on the same level. I also like the symmetry of this composition very much. These two practicals on the background and the symmetrical composition, it all adds to the power of this person. And finally, one more angle. Here the actor is wisely placed between two windows on the darker background. We have a nice powerful upstage key light from the right window and the backlight from the left window. Here they use a reflector from this side, white bounce board, reflecting the light from a window to his back and to his hair. So we have this nice edge light and his back is also separated from the background. To have more light wrap on his face, we place another reflector somewhere here, white bounce board. This helps the light from the window that otherwise would be too edgy. It will be too edgy. We need to travel it a bit more, to be a bit soft. So the light from the window comes onto the bounce board and then reflects and it helps light to travel a bit more to the other side of his face. So do it with care, don't create a front light. Here we still hold a lot of contrast on his face, but the light is not edgy. Have you noticed these nice highlights? They also come from the white bounce board. And that's our lighting game for today. 
I really like the look of this movie and Janusz Kaminski's style as a director of photography. There are numerous greatly lit scenes in this movie and we might return to some of them in future videos. If you like this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for your support, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm always happy to see your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to check out previous episodes, uh, Peaky Blinders and No Country for an Old Man. Again, my name is Anthony and I'll see you in the next episodes of Lighting Game. Take care.